So this is a 3D printed mold of an RC plane. And together with some carbon fiber and fiberglass, we will turn this 10 kilogram of filament into an amazing RC plane. Welcome to the new series about the LED 410. This is the legendary LED 410. It's a true working horse with its huge cargo capacity. We are building a fleet of three as an RC plane with three and a half meter wingspan. And this is the first prototype doing some ground tests. You can also see Ralph, who is the mastermind behind this project. He designed the whole plane in Fusion and printed the molds. So these molds are 3D printed. Damn! The whole plane is designed in Fusion and these molds are printed in separate pieces. They are printed very cheap because these molds are just the negative form of the fuselage of the LED 410. Before we can cast these molds, it was around two weeks of work just making sure that the surface of the mold is perfect. I have applied three layers of wax, then I applied a coating to prevent the epoxy sticking to the mold itself. So this new project has been made possible by R&G. They provided me with all the necessary stuff that I need. If you have a similar project and you need some fabric, tools, epoxy, go ahead, check the link in the description and you get everything you need. So the first step would be to prepare the epoxy. I have epoxy here with a working time of around three and a half hours. That might sound a lot, but in fact, if we want to cast both sides in one day, that's a tough job. We have to mix the correct amount of the harder and the resin itself. I am using the epoxy with a mixing ratio of 100 to 30. That should be as accurate as possible to make sure that the epoxy won't be dry and hard too early or cure at all. After a lot of carefully mixing, the epoxy was now ready to use and the timer of three and a half hours starts now. So we also need a tiny bit of epoxy which is quite thick so I mixed it already with micro balloons and around a, an hour ago this will be dry much earlier than this we need that to make sure that all the areas where we have these curves for example on the windows to get around the the thicker epoxy because the fabric will not go into all of these curves it, it won't do that so with this we make sure that the fabric and the epoxy has a perfectly flat surface on the mold itself. We are using a tiny brush to only put as much epoxy as needed. The micro balloons lead to a weaker epoxy which might break at some point. But it has to be enough to cover all the elevations in the mold. After the critical areas are done, it's now time to give the epoxy another spin. And after that, we carefully brush the surface of the mold with a tiny bit of epoxy to have that wet already when we apply the first fabric. While brushing, it is very important to not brush too hard, otherwise we destroy the coating to prevent the epoxy from sticking to the mold. So that's the first layer of epoxy. We want to make it as thin as possible. We'll be using three layers of fabric. One layer of carbon, 160 gram, which is the third layer, and two layers of fiberglass, also 160 gram, which uh, go first. The carbon will make the whole fuselage very stiff and strong, um, but the fabric itself is quite thick, so it will have problems laying around all the corners. That's why we will use fiberglass before to make sure that the surface in the end looks as clean as possible. First layer. I know there are many different methods of how to work with epoxy, carbon fiber and these molds. So if you have any tips or tricks, let me know in the comments. Even though I made templates for the fabrics, it's not always that easy to fit the fiberglass to the needed area. Especially on very round shapes, like the very front of the fuselage. 
That's also the hardest part of the whole plane because the front gets round very quick. We also don't want any air stuck under the first layer, which would be the outside of the finished caster part. In these corners, I also used this carbon fiber roving. This fills the tiny gap between the 90 degree angle inside the mold. The fabric would never take such a high curve, so there has to be something. So the epoxy we mixed with micro balloons earlier is slowly getting dry and that's perfect because it will hopefully, hopefully stay where it is now. As you can see, it is so hard to know if there's enough or even too much resin, but there's help. I'll show you later. Layer by layer. I mean, I've done this a few times now, but it's always exciting again and again. You never really know, am I doing this right? You will find out if everything worked as planned at the very end of the video. That's the last layer of fabric now, which is carbon fiber 160 gram. The exact weight like the fiberglass. The difference? The carbon is woven much thicker, so it's less likely that the carbon will bend as good as the fiberglass. If I would put the carbon outside, first, the surface would be much rougher and second, the carbon would not be able to go over all the elevations in the mold surface. These two fabrics in combination is, at least for me, the best solution to get a strong but lightweight fuselage. The only problem now is that you cannot see the air bubbles. They are gone, so if there are any air bubbles left now, they will be there. Unfortunately, I cannot use a vacuum pump, otherwise the whole 3D printed mold would be destroyed in a second. So the light will help me to find the spots where there is not enough glue. On fiberglass it's quite easy to see, but with carbon, because it's so black, it won't shine that much. And the light helps me to find these areas. For example, up here there's almost no epoxy. I decided to not have the whole fuselage in carbon. That has a reason. First, the carbon is simply not needed in all areas. Second, the antennas for the receiver will be inside the very end and the very front of the plane. With carbon everywhere, I would have to put the antennas outside the fuselage to guarantee a good signal in the air. All right, so every layer is done. We needed like three hours approximately and now the project is not done. We have some small details we need to fix now. For example, some of these corners, as you can see here, the fabric got a bit away from the mold. So that's something we need to fix now before the epoxy is completely dry. And I did some small fixes. The next step, trimming the edge of the fuselage mold. My plan is to put both molds together and let the still wet fabric overlap to create a bond between the two halves. So 
To make sure that the molds are exactly where I need them, I will use these pins to make sure the molds align perfectly. On one half, I remove the fabric from the mold, but only like a centimeter or so. This makes overlapping much easier when both molds are connected. Both halves are together now, as you can see, and now comes the tricky part. I try to overlap one side of the fabric so it will meet the other mold. Let's see if that works. Now it is visible that both halves meet here, which is perfect. That's exactly what I wanted. And now my job is to make sure that these fabrics are meeting each other. I added a bit of epoxy and with small stripes of carbon, the two sides are connected 100%. And much better, it has a strong connection. So I learned the trick from my friend Rami. If you want to get this, to a very end, it is simple. You just get epoxy to this and then you slowly start to roll this up. Like this. And then you can move on and the fabric will directly stick to the spot where it should be. Let's try it. That worked perfectly. At the very beginning of the video, I was talking about a method to remove the unnecessary epoxy. Well, that solution is simple. It's peel ply. I applied that already to most surfaces when the molds were not connected yet. And now, also on top of the carbon stripes. Peel ply is simply being removed after everything is cured. It sucks out all the unnecessary resin and leaves behind a flat surface ready to glue onto it. It also makes it look a bit nicer. Since I don't have a long brush, I just use some CA to glue it onto that small stick. Getting to the end of the fuselage and the rudder from the front is simply impossible. Good to have the open back designed just to reach every spot. I added some fiberglass there as well to have a good connection to both sides. Alright, so it has been 48 hours since we did the whole fuselage in one piece and I was praying that the fuselage would release from the mold. And let's see if that worked. Since we used a lot of epoxy, I need some tools to help me to get this separated from the mold. And I put some screwdrivers here, some of these, they will help me to separate both molds. And this is already looking good. Yes, finally. Wow. All right, so 
first half is gone. <laughs> Amazing. I can tell that already. And so lightweight, that's crazy. I expected some holes in here. The angle for the fabric to go around is so tight, uh, that almost never worked. I'm surprised that it worked here. Nice. Remember when we applied the peel ply on almost every visible layer of the inner skin of the fuselage? Now it's time to remove it. Just like this. And that's quite satisfying. The fabric underneath not only looks better, but it's also clean and ready for installing the wooden structure inside. The peel ply sucked a lot of unnecessary epoxy from the fabric and you can see the clean inner surface of the fuselage. As you can see, everything worked perfectly. I'm really proud and I can say that this turned out so well. The next step will be to document how we will finish the surface of the whole fuselage now because as you could see, it is kind of rough. It has to be sanded, it has to be painted it has to be sanded again and again, but we will make this perfect. Thank you so much for watching. A huge thank you also goes again to RNG for helping me out to be able to make this project possible. If you have a similar project, feel free to check the link to get the best deals, to get the best products available. That's it for this video. See you next time. Bye bye. Feierabend.